My name is Laura Jurds. I'm a trumpet player and composer living in London in the UK. Stepping Back, Jumping In is the name of my brand new album coming out on Edition Records, July 2019, and features a 14-piece ensemble which I put together to write some brand new music for, alongside some other fantastic composers within the ensemble, and features some of my favourite musicians anywhere. Um, so it's very exciting. This project came about because I had the opportunity to put on a concert here at King's Place, actually, in Hall One. And, yeah, I've spent quite a lot of the last few years writing for small groups of musicians, either my band Dinosaur or perhaps a few little uh, chamber ensembles. And, yeah, the composer in me was really hungry for, like, a huge palette of sounds to write for. I've done some more composer-like projects of my own in the past where I've been playing, for instance, my first two albums, Landing Ground and Human Spirit, feature a few more instruments and a few, a few more players to kind of expand the palette of sounds to write for. But this, this was the perhaps the most exciting ensemble I've ever written for, purely due to the fact that so many contrasting sounds. You've got banjo and santor, and trombone, euphonium, piano, double bass, drum kit. So there was lots of kind of sonic challenges I feel like when I'm writing for players I know, they, they really help me write the piece because I can really imagine the kind of thing they, they might enjoy playing or the kind of thing they do with something I write. So I, I always feel like everyone I'm writing for, when, when I know them, they're in the room with me when I'm composing. And that's, that, that makes my job as a composer so much easier because I'm just inspired by imagining the wonderful way in, in, in which they all play. And the Ligeti Quartet, because I know them as individual players as well, there's there's moments where perhaps, you know, Rich on viola, he, he might have a certain moment in, in one of the pieces because I'm aware of his kind of aesthetics and the kind of things that he does. There, there's a real mix of moments where they're individual string players, but often moments where they're really acting as one, one unit. My name's Richard Jones. I'm the viola player in the Ligeti Quartet. Since recording her first album, uh, we've actually commissioned both Laura and Elliot to write us string quartets. So we've had quite a nice collaborative relationship with Laura, I think going back basically eight or nine years, something like that. I had some like laying into the viola kind of moments that I, I don't know if Laura knows me as a, as a player, but it sort of felt very much like my kind of thing that I like doing. Yeah, just kind of like dirgy viola, like really getting into the string. The first piece I wrote for the ensemble is called Jumping In. It's track one on the album. And yeah, to kind of get into the world of the instruments I was writing for, I actually started with the banjo. Um, I actually love the sound of the banjo. It's one of those sort of love-hate instruments, but I absolutely love it so much. Really love that kind of country Americana sound as well. So I started off just to get some inspiration, listening to some banjo music, listening to this great duo called Flat and Scruggs. And yeah, some of the little kind of isms, if you like, or idiomatic things about the banjo and that kind of inspired the, the whole piece. And I think a lot of the time with the composition, one little seed of idea can really then blossom into a much bigger thing. And that's certainly what happened with that first piece. So yeah, the banjo was a catalyst for everything else. And then it just becomes really fun colouring in the ideas with all these amazing instruments and instrumentalists. It was particularly wonderful having string quartet to write for actually because, yeah, I think there's such an amazing emotional spectrum available with string instruments and having a quartet like the Ligeti Quartet to write for who, who are kind of up for doing absolutely anything from improvising to doing all kinds of extended techniques and really kind of yeah, pushing things, it was a real treat to write for them. I'm Mandira from the Ligeti Quartet. I play the violin. I play mainly classical music, uh, but I also improvise. As a string player, as a member of a string quartet, we often 
might find that music could be quite not badly written for strings, but just uh, you know, not very idiomatic. And Laura's music's always idiomatic, tricky sometimes, but uh, really well written. And she makes the she makes the most of a really good string sound. The other thing I love personally about her music is that it's really eccentric and um, yeah, good fun to play. Some of it makes me laugh out loud, and some of it's just kind of oh, incredible. Like a moment of genius. <laughs> It was a real treat for me to be playing alongside two other brass players in this music. I was playing with Raf Clarkson on the trombone and Martin Lee Thompson on euphonium, both of which are fantastic brass players and have really unique sounds on their instruments and also amazing improvisers. I played with Raf quite a few times before. It's the first time and hopefully not the last time I've played with Martin, who's an amazing young euphonium player. And yeah, a real treat to be part of a brass section. I'm often playing on my own actually in my, in my band Dinosaur, so it's really fun for me to be part of a bigger sound. And I used, in, in a lot of the pieces, I really made use of the, the kind of power that you can get from having you know, more than one brass player and that kind of big range you get from trumpet, trombone and the euphonium. So lots of big kind of walls of brass present in the, in the first piece, which kind of really contrasts a lot of the intricate string sounds coming from the banjo inside of the piano and the strings and such like. So yeah, that was a real fun kind of palette to write for. The album was recorded over two days in Sage Gates Head. They kindly offered us a space to record in. We were set up pretty much like we were live, but we had the uh, luxury of getting to edit the pieces together. Um, and we did this uh, in the middle of our tour, so it was like a crazy, hectic period, but hopefully that really added to the spirit of what was already quite crazy, hectic music. Depending on the nature of each composition, we um, either recorded them live, so straight through, similar to a live performance, and with the luxury of doing maybe a couple of takes if need be. And we either did that or we recorded things in sections. So with a, an extended work that lasts like 10 minutes, there's often obvious edit points, so little silences or gaps in the music, which enable you to kind of do a section, say A to C, all the way through and kind of do that a couple of times until it feels really right and then edit the piece together to, to hopefully result in what feels like a really live, dynamic and uh, exciting uh, version. Susan Oliver, who plays Santor in the ensemble, wrote a fantastic piece for the group and she, she comes from more of a contemporary classical background, I'd say. She writes a lot of operas, a lot of politically charged uh, works. And uh, this is probably the first time she'd written for jazz musicians and improvising musicians in this kind of setting. Susanne's piece uh, used an alternative tuning method, well, alternative from Western classical music, at least. Um, it's uh, a caron note, which is sort of in between a tone and a semitone and it's used in Iranian music for Iranian scales and we first did a workshop of this piece with Susan at Goldsmiths and I, I note from like the moment of starting the piece we were, we were like that sounds amazing and the other thing about it, it was that it's a very natural thing um, so sort of there was something just about the, the placement of it that just felt really nice under the fingers and then when you combine that note with the notes either side of it, so you have F caron and then F sharp and F natural, you get this kind of weird like major minor thing going on. It's like kind of like Laura's music, I suppose, as well, which often has this kind of like happy, sad dual thing going on. And this note was like had all of that in it as well, I think. It was it was sort of dark and then light, just according to what everybody was doing around it. Her piece is it's very textural and kind of slowly builds up and 
ends up on this amazing bright sounding chord which is made even brighter sounding than what, what we might be used to because of this tuning system. Elliot Galvin is one of the musicians I've been collaborating with uh, for the longest. He's a member of my band Dinosaur, um, and we've been playing together for a long time. And yeah, similar to me, his music is, he's very influenced by jazz music, but also has a strong background in contemporary classical music. So the, the resultant sounds of his compositions uh, are pretty eclectic, I think. It seemed that Elliot had really like gone quite a long way with extended techniques. It seemed he, he got sort of really interested in sort of pushing the string instruments to the like maximum weird weirdness. It was very satisfying to have these really unusual textures and again that was really nice to be pushed you know again out of the comfort zone in a very satisfying way. You can really hear certainly in the piece that he's written for this you can really hear strong influences from people like Ligeti and George Crumb people like that he, he's got this amazing way of really um, executing certain textures using the instruments, which I find really inspiring. Yeah, there's some really bold and ambitious writing that is unlike, I don't, I don't, I don't really think there's anyone quite doing what he does, as, as well as, you know, because he's playing the piano as part of the piece as well. It's quite rare to find someone with that kind of compositional integrity who is also such a fantastic performer. So in the middle of the album, there is a piece called Jump, Cut, Shuffle, which I wrote for the Ligeti Quartet a few years ago now. So it's, it's the one piece on the album which isn't brand new. But yeah, it felt like a nice kind of point in the album to kind of insert a piece with, with like less instruments. So it's just string quartet on that album. And it's actually entirely composed, so there's no improvisation, apart from a few uh, natural harmonics on the viola, which you'll hear at a certain point if you're, if you're keen. The fifth track on the album, called Companion Species, was written by Anja Lofdal and Heide K. Johansdottir. They're both musicians from Oslo in Norway. Anja plays the piano and keyboards and Heide plays the tuba. And we had the good fortune of having Anja fly over to play as part of the tour as well. She played synth and electronics in the ensemble. And they wrote the piece together, which is a really interesting difference from the other pieces. So their, their piece was a collaborative composition. And yeah, they're part of a scene of musicians in Norway that I, I really love, who you have a lot of these bands which write a lot of their music together, which isn't something I've done as much myself. So I was very intrigued to see how she, or how they both went about writing the piece, and also how they taught us the music. They didn't actually give us a score in the conventional sense, you know, a piece of paper with lots of notation. They actually kind of taught us the parts by ear and kind of explained the structure, which evolved during the rehearsal process as well. And I found that a really inviting and wonderful way to uh, teach people music. She gave us some core ideas, some little motifs. I, I guess it was kind of collaboration, the way we approached it. She had a clear idea of how things would work, um, what would come after what, um, which is, I guess, the main composition. And then around that, we uh, worked out the lengths of sections, what felt good. And I guess it was slightly different at each performance. It kind of made it get into your bloodstream very quickly, which, which kind of gets it in a kind of performance and communication ready state very soon. So, so that was a really great experience. The final track on the album is called Stepping Back and that started life as a piano piece. A few months before embarking on this project I decided to yeah, start writing a few pieces for piano. Um, piano was the first instrument I ever played and I still do play. I started learning piano about five so it's, it's been the instrument that's been with me for the whole way and 
An instrument I'm, I always compose using the piano. I, I really love to use the instrument to explore different textures, rhythms, harmony, all, all kinds of things. It, it offers so much as a kind of compositional tool. So, yeah, I'd written this little piece. Um, I hadn't really done anything with it, and then when it came to writing a second piece for yeah, stepping back, jumping in, I came back to this piece and orchestrated it. It's kind of a bit like if you have like a black and white kind of just drawing, that, that would be the piano piece and then I've sort of coloured it in with all the different instruments in the ensemble. There's so many different ways you can do it, so it's really exciting to kind of go through that process, especially, you know, with all the different instruments, the, the, the acoustic guitar, the strings, and I think you can hear in the piece that it did start life as a piano piece and I, I quite like that. I think that's, especially compared to the other piece I wrote, that was very much like, yeah, really going for just writing for the ensemble from, from the very beginning, thinking about the ensemble. It didn't start life as anything other than that. So yeah, the two things were very different processes, but both equally intriguing.